Welcome, everyone. It's great to be back for episode 13. I'm Jodie Fielden. I'm joined by my work wife, Bestie, and business partner, Audrey Varga. During these podcasts, we share with you how you can leverage your passion into profit. Whether you're looking to launch to the next phase, take time away from the floor, or you're looking to sell your business and cash out your investment, you're in the right place because we've just about done it all and we're here to share with you that you can too because it's time to believe your business can be everything you ever wanted. That's absolutely right. Hi, everyone, and welcome back. We spent the last couple of episodes talking about clients and knowing which clients are value and prosperity-based and also which clients are discount and poverty-based. Discount and poverty based. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's catching today um now we've already so we had a look at the bargain hunters and the cheap chasers all the way up to the value for money peeps in the creme de la creme so those are the ones that are loyal to the brand i think it's time we were actually talking about this at the end of our last episode um that we decided we'd jump in and make another episode about where we're talking about guilt um, the, the guilt we feel about putting our prices up because we don't want to overcharge our clients. We feel bad about increasing our prices. Um, and also imposter syndrome, which I mentioned, you know, like I was saying that I felt about, you know, oh, am I really as good as what I'm charging for? Like, yeah, it's just a whole mindset of, and thing around it. So I think our dream will be really It'd be really good if you can just start off with some of the clients that you've worked with that have been felt really guilty and how you help them get a different perspective of overcoming that guilt and, and not um, hiding behind it. Yes, yes. I must say uh, most of the time when we start to work on pricing, this guilt uh, starts to kick in. And then here and there I, I, I meet with uh, clients who actually don't have any problem to charging the right price because they understand without charging the right price their business is not going to survive. But that's a very, very small percentage. Most of the time when we start to work together, uh, most of the business owners, they copied their prices from someone else's prices. So they don't even understand the strategy behind pricing. And they don't even really know if they are profitable or not. Sometimes you sometimes they do have a little bit of a savings, but they really work very, very hard to get that savings. But once we start to work on pricing and once uh, we go through all the structural and strategy element of pricing, this is when everything changes for a business owner. And this is when normally it can go two ways. One way, someone is going to be extremely excited about it and they say, that's it, I'm just going to change my prices because I understand now that without charging this, my business is not going to survive. Or then the other end is when they say, oh my God, you know, like, can I change my pricing? How am I going to change it? Are people going to pay for it? Like, uh, how am I going to articulate, you know, my pricing are going to be this much from this time? Are people going to leave me? And that's a really, really big question because uh, if you belong to the second group, then you're questioning yourself and you don't know what you should do. You are not alone because this is the bigger group. <laughs> the smaller yep. group is when people get really excited about it and they say, that's it. I'm just going to do it because that's the only way to do it. This topic always reminds me of um, our friend that we worked with up in Queensland. I'm going to get you to tell this story. And, and it's one that we've done um, a few masterclasses on and, and it's how Adriana was able to work with someone and take $3 and turn it into 50,000 in how many weeks? Was it 12 weeks, Adriana? I think it was. Uh, yeah, I think it was 12 yeah. weeks. Yeah, so it took for us eight weeks to uh, work the strategy out and, uh, you know, just work the mindset through about pricing and not resisting pricing and all the assumptions what were around uh, our changing pricing. But in 12 weeks, uh, uh, we... Do you uh, want to tell the story of, of the journey you took her on and how you got her there? 
<laughs> yeah, we always say, you know, like this is a real life uh, ghost story because yeah. uh, this business owner uh, came to us and she was asking for help. She knew she needed help. So she asked for help and we decided that she's going to come on coaching with us. And then um, uh, our agreement was that we're going to reach out and we're going to uh, organize an appointment for onboarding and we will start to work with this business owner. And then she disappeared. <laughs> she couldn't, we couldn't reach her. And obviously we sent SMS, we tried to call and email, and then we eventually just uh, gave up because we realized probably she wasn't as ready as she thought she is. And then pain, and then pandemic hit. And this is when, when she came back and uh, she asked for our help again. And this is when we ask, you know, like, uh, we are more than happy to have, but you need to tell us what happened last time because we agreed on we're going to work uh, together with on your business and you just disappeared. And this is when she said to us that uh, she was worried that I will, I will take over her business, which is an assumption because she didn't understand uh, about coaching. She thought that when she signs up for sign signs up for coaching what will happen i will tell her what to do and there is no other way around it and i told her you know like this assumption cost for you six months of your life and of your you know that was a block uh, towards to your success because if you just would have asked the questions i could have said to you or answered to you that coaching is all about mentoring and brainstorming together and helping you to find the best solution for yourself so it's never about me telling you what to do and taking over your business firstly i have enough businesses for myself to worry about secondly you know like i'm your mentor i'm here to help you and uh, help you to work towards to uh, to your goals and to your dreams, not my dreams. So anyway, she came on board. We started to work on, she had a very busy barber shop, really busy. Uh, and she was in uh, the lower uh, part of the, uh, the market triangle. Uh, lots of lots of clients, like literally people were lining up, like 20, 25 people lining up, waiting for their appointment outside on the street. It was that busy. They were providing absolutely amazing service. They were uh, priced quite low. And uh, she uh, was like, unfortunately, uh, at the end of the months and quarters, many times she had to ask her husband to, uh, to give some money or lend some money so she could pay her bus or superannuation. So she knew she was in, the, in deep trouble and she knew she couldn't find the way for herself. So this is when we started to work and because she had a very, very busy barber shop. It was the, you know, numbers game. So we had a look, you know, the break even, we had a look, uh, the flow of the clients, number of the clients, we had a look all the uh, KPIs uh, for the business and we came up with a strategy. So I came up with a strategy uh, for, uh, looking into the pricing and change the price because that was the easiest way for us to pump some money into the business so she can stop asking her husband to taking money away from the family so when i told to her i think the first strategy should be look into your pricing and change your pricing she almost fainted because she said like i can't change my pricing people are going to leave us it's a barber shop we can't charge more than this and i told her just listen to me just just wait for a second you know just grab a calculator and i will ask you to punch a couple of numbers in that calculator and i told to her would you be comfortable if i would say if you would put your prices up by three dollars you will be out of trouble and you would become profitable and she looked at me like i'm an alien from from mars and she said like yes like i can put my prices up by three dollars if i have to and i told her well it's a numbers game so grab the calculator so three dollars times 400 clients per week what can you see and multiply that by 50 weeks and this is when she almost fainted again because the number was over fifty thousand dollars i think it was around fifty six thousand dollars and this is when her whole mindset has switched changed put the prices up 
And then a week later, we've got an amazing email from her telling us that it's no one is a bird. <laughs> And she doubled the price for kids' haircut, and none of the parent, none of the parents uh, resisted it. So she said it was an experience for her life. It was the and it was such. I think they were that first week. I think from memory, it was a short week, so they only worked four, four days. days. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Sorry, they worked. They only worked one day. No, no, no. One day shorter. Say? No. So one day shorter. Yeah, so it was so a short four days. Yeah. So yeah. one day less. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And um, and that they made more money in that week with the shorter day than they had made in history in in yes. any week. It was their biggest yeah. week. So the difference that just a small amount can make is huge. Um. And it's it's surprising about how many times we hear, oh, I can't charge that because it's not industry standard. Like this is this is how much I need to charge in the industry. Yes, yes, and and the industry standard is 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 very it's a very interesting thing because again it's an assumption, and I almost feel like this is a, a people. This is almost like an excuse why people are stuck where they are because if you say this is an industry standard you are sort of covered uh, why you are charging what you are charging many times i hear this from uh, pilates intro instructors that they cannot put their prices up because everyone else in the industry charges the same and it is very dangerous when we uh, we we have that belief that we cannot charge more or this is all what we can charge and maybe the price is right you know but you need to understand why you are charging what you are charging it's extremely important for you to understand because if you know why you are charging what you are charging then you will that then confidence will come just like for this barber shop owner you know like when she understood uh, that uh, with the three dollars where she going to end up she had no problem and the thing is once you start it then it's going to become addictive because then you will understand mm -hmm. and even her uh, she was changing her pricing so what happened we did the three dollars and then the next step was like kids haircut you know like she understood the early uh, break even and she said well where kids fit in here and nowhere so she had to put the prices up she doubled the price for kids and then no one said a word so then she understood mm -hmm. well people see a value in our service because i must say her her girls and the boys working with her they did an absolutely amazing job they did really fashionable hairdressing quality you know like boutique hairdressing yep. quality haircuts and for the kids, they did all these funky haircuts with the line on the side with and the everything. Mm -hmm. And they did charge like 15 or $20 for that. And once she understood the value, then she had no problem with charging what she was charging. Yeah. And there's yeah. no guilt. Of and, that is um, no guilt <laughs> whatsoever. No. <laughs> you, you don't feel guilty once you know the reason behind what's going on. And... Um, I think that that's that's the hardest hurdle to get over and it also that's when it comes into the strategy about okay well if I'm charging more this is how much I need to charge to meet my break even and to have profit what do I need to add to that like what added value do I need to bring into my business if if I if I don't have like if I'm just doing a normal um uh reformer class okay and i've got three people in it i'm doing a reformer class the everyone around me is charging you know 75 dollars a class or whatever and you've got three people but um my break even says that i need to be charging 95 dollars an hour okay how can i make that 95 how can i justify that value what can i do differently and this is where um, the thinking outside of the box that we're going to be doing in the retreat and, and those offers of, like, okay, how to start thinking about what you can do differently to bring your value up to the break, to what you need to be making profit in your business. Um, so that's, uh, that's going to be a big part of it as well. 
Yes, yes, absolutely. And it's absolutely uh, true. And um, the other thing is what I wanted to talk about, and it comes or it's, uh, you know, like it belongs to this subject when, uh, you know, in certain Facebook groups, uh, people are asking, you know, like how much would I charge for this service? How much would I charge for that service? So people are absolutely confused about uh, the basic element of running a business, which is, uh, in a way, it's very sad that uh, we uh, entering into business without knowing the most important part of business, which is how to calculate our pricing and how to create uh, strong business uh, foundations and fundamentals for ourselves. And um, when I see these questions, uh, unfortunately, most of the answers are not the right answers or they are not uh, helping uh, those business owners uh, with uh, figuring out, you know, like what would be the best, uh, best answer for themselves, because normally what people do, and they are very helpful, they want to help, but they don't understand, they actually cause more uh, damage than not, because they just say, I charge for, I charge this much, I charge that much. But what you don't understand, and we didn't understand in the beginning, that uh, everyone's break even is very, very different. And one price uh, would work for one salon and it would not work for other salon or studio. So it's very, very important. And if you really want to figure it out how much you should charge, you should not waste your time to go to Facebook groups and figure it out how much uh, Jenny and Christopher is charging for the similar services you much better off to actually educate yourself because it's all going to come back to education. And once you yeah. have the education, then you're going to have the confidence and then you will know how much you should charge. And it would not be any uh, question for you if you are worth what you are charging because you will understand if I don't charge this much, then I won't survive. Then I'm going to end up uh, doing the crazy aid, working, 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 and eventually feeling frustrated, overworked, overwhelmed, burnt out. And it is because mm -hmm. the pricing is not right. Well, at the end of the day, if you don't have your pricing right, you've got to shut the doors and you may as well go work for someone else because um, we're here to make money. At the end of the day, as a business owner, we're here for three things to um because we love what we do we want to be our own boss and we're here to make money profit is not a dirty word it is okay to be in it for profit that's what we're here for yeah and i think i think the profit is our reward for uh, running a business because it's a huge responsibility. It's a huge investment, investment of your money, investment of your time, investment of your knowledge. And then you're looking after clients, you're looking after your team. You, If you do business right, you can actually uh, change, uh, your, uh, the pe change those people's life who are working for you because you can create a better life better life uh, circumstances for uh, the people who are working for you too. So mm -hmm. I think we need to really understand that once you have a business, you do deserve your reward. Your profit is your reward you because you risk everything and you are the one who thinking, you know, like you don't finish at five, you don't finish at six when your team is finished. You actually, your brain is keep mm -hmm. working on day in and day out your eye is always open your ear is always open you're always wondering you always uh, learn alert <laughs> research you do always doing research you know like it's really a never-ending story because uh, uh and that's that's you don't that's, stop you don't stop even 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 when you're at the top you still don't stop you still got it, it takes work to stay at the top you don't just get there and go, okay, I'm here. That's when you come back down. You need to, you, it's actually harder work to stay at the top than it is to get to the top, I always think, because it, it's it's very, it can be hard up there. And I know even with us, like Adriana will be, I'll get something through the middle of the night or I'll have seen she's been answered an email at something at four o'clock in the morning. You know, like even though we 
um, very much advocate for work-life harmony. As a business owner, you, you're still on. Like you can choose not to be on. And that's that's the um, the benefit of being in a position of a profitable business is that you can choose not to be on. But um, like for me, I, I said to Adriana the other morning, now I was working in my dreams last night. Do I get paid? <laughs> <laughs> and my answer was, you know, as long as you can show me the result, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like... It's all right. Look, I had results. I, I had results. You asked the clients I was yeah. working with last night, yeah. <laughs> you know, so yeah. it's it's as business owners, we're always on when we've got a profitable, well-oiled machine as a business, we can choose when or whether we will we want to be on or off. Um, yeah. That is we're going to have to cut today's podcast short it's end of school holidays um here in australia the kids have just broken up um and my son has come home early and i'm not sure if you can hear Bryn chatting away in the background that's all right that's all good yeah <laughs> so yeah, no, school holiday is starting yeah school holiday is starting and uh yeah it's going oh. to be a lot of challenge for lots of parents and lots of business owners it's yeah. hard work it is hard yeah. work and even like poor adriana um has to suffer um, through my school holidays as much as I do because she needs to fit in around what Harper, like what I have to do with Harper and Bryn. And that's a whole nother beast is like even though Adriana has her fur babies, she still has to deal with the school, my school holidays. <laughs> yeah, school holidays are a nightmare for me too, <laughs> not just for the yeah, parents. <laughs> no. That's all right. And then we yeah. get everything. We will. Really and the idea. fact we live where we live, it makes it so much better but now adriana's moved up here that she's anti the tourists and the holiday makers as well now she's turned into a real local so yes absolutely it's going absolutely. to be an interesting this is our is this our last podcast going into summer uh into christmas i think it is we go on yes. holidays next week don't we yes we are going on holidays yeah yeah and we deserve these holidays. We don't have guilt around <laughs> our holidays. We no, there's no guilt. Off. And <laughs> in these three weeks, we are going to do very minimal monitoring our emails, but that's it. We worked really mm -hmm. hard. The last three weeks, we worked extra hours and really, really hard for us to be able to take these three weeks off. But as business owners, I guarantee that you and me, we're still going to think about strategies, what we can do, how we can make it better, mm -hmm. what are going to be the topics for our next podcast and all those things. So mm -hmm. we're recording this podcast actually in advance that for yep. the next three weeks uh, when we are going to be on holidays, we are covered. Everything is done and we can have a guilt-free holiday for ourselves. <laughs> we will take a guilt-free holiday. I think... Um, uh i give you maybe three days before i get a little tap 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 in the voxer with a thought i I, yes. I think there's going to be about three days that you'll shut down and that's okay we're allowed to do that but um <laughs> the only time we can really get it to shut down is when i send her away to um an island somewhere with sylvie yeah to go and yeah. kick back and there's no reception anywhere no receptions and there is a lot of destruction sylvie is my travel body and uh, she is a lot of destruction so it's really really good she yes. is. <laughs> oh well you're gonna have your adriana's parents arrive from hungary next week yes so yes. David, David, you'll be there. distracted yes i can't wait absolutely. till mama v comes and does her cooking fantastic <laughs> all right well what we'll right, guys up. Don't forget our virtual retreat. Um, I will, let me just put it back along the little doobie whacker down the bottom. There it is. You can see it's the pricing nexus at focusgdt.com backslash retreats. You can watch the video um, that we were talking about earlier for um, the, the, it's called a glimpse in the mirror. So it's guilt-free and confident pricing to flow and flourish which is a high level uh, perception uh, perspective of pricing and some of those nuances. And, and we do talk, Adriana goes more into the, uh, again, into the value-based clients. 